Hello family, and this is going to be the last video I do tonight, okay? And then I'm going to creep away from you guys and come back tomorrow with some more videos if I can. And if it's something out there to talk about, because it's been dry. It has been dry. It's been a dry season in the entertainment business. But I did want to say, did y'all know, or oh, y'all should know if y'all watch a lot of reality TV, uh, Miss Minnie from the Little Women of uh, Atlanta. She died, y'all. I think it was yesterday or today. When was it, Sean? Today? Sunday? Okay. Maybe it was uh, this past Sunday. Uh, this past weekend. She died in a parking lot. I don't know. I got to investigate that story a little bit more. But send prayers up for her and her family, y'all. Because it just it sounds really weird. Uh, how she died some people were saying that I was listening to she died where she uh, was head-on it was a head-on collision in the parking lot I'm like in a parking lot how fast you going and then I heard somebody said that she got ran over and she died uh from her injuries later on in the hospital uh that Sunday I think it was she passed so y'all keep miss Minnie of the uh little women of atlanta and uh in your prayers and stuff uh because i hate to see people die so abruptly you know what i'm saying so uh that's all i wanted to say about that i forgot to put a picture in there but y'all know who i'm talking about y'all look at a uh, google um miss um me many uh, I'm sure, and just put Little Women of Atlanta, you'll see who I'm talking about. She's a nice looking woman. But anyway, uh, yeah, just wanted to throw that up for her. She will be missed. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about this story, honey, that Lil B. Scott had put out. Um, I guess she has some insider news because she is a heavy uh, big time blogger up there. So she knows people that know people that know people on these reality shows. And she gets this undiscovered or undisclosed tea way before uh, things are brought out where we actually get to view them as spectators of uh, these so-called reality shows. Okay, because that's all we are. We are spectators. We're not really fans. We're not fanatics. Uh, well, at least I'm not and I hope my family ain't either I just hope that y'all enjoy commentary y'all enjoy reality shows but y'all don't really take it uh, to that next level where you actually think you really know these people unless you really know these people and then if you know these people then you know some of the stuff that's being put out on them is not true you shouldn't really get your panties all up in a bunch you know what I'm saying because you know them and like I said, some people put salt on your name, don't even know you, and you ain't even considered to be a reality star. You know, this just people just want to start shit and want to put stuff out there that's not true. And, you know, you just have to go with it and hopefully your character speaks for itself and people just die down with those no good rumors. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I was just cruising through my uh, social media feed and came up again. Lil B. Scott over there throwing out some salacious stories on our favorite past part of the day. We want to put some mindless entertainment drama in our minds and in our visuals, uh, meaning our eyesight and ear sight uh, of the Real Housewives of Atlanta in their first taping for uh, the vir virtual reunion show. Honey, they said it was a hot mess. It was a hot mess. It was, everybody was coming for each other. Except for Cynthia. Yeah, Cynthia wasn't coming for nobody. She was just trying to explain a little here and there. And, you know, still straddling that fence. And it's just here what it is. She ain't going to be no good. She ain't going to be no good. She's just going to be that friend that you could go to. She's going to talk her stuff off camera. Uh, and then if you push her to a corner, uh, you know, in a corner, she'll try to come out swinging just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. But let's get on into this story, people. But I want to know uh, one thing. Did y'all really like this season of Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12? I mean, for me, it had its moments. Then it had its dry spots. And then it was just like, oh, let's just take them off TV. You know, because... 
for me, I already knew Snake Gate wasn't nothing but a bunch of uh, hoorah type of mess. You know what I'm saying? Nene really didn't have a storyline. She really wasn't giving us anything. And it was just so many rumors and innuendos on whether she got punished by not being shown the first three episodes of the new season because she had pretty much strangled allegedly knocked out the tooth of allegedly that cameraman you know what i'm saying so she had to pay her debt in that way by probably paying him for those uh miss episodes because they had to go to him so he wouldn't sue because you know i told you, you can't sue on real housewives of atlanta or any of the real house uh wives of franchise part a part of bravo entertainment can't do it everything got to be settled out of court you know in the boardroom or whatnot and, you know, it doesn't matter what we think or what is put out there as rumors. You know what really went down. And unless you really going to tell your side and tell the truth, that's up to you. But right now, they don't need to know. So whatever rumors or speculations out there, just let them fly. Fly over your head. Don't worry about it. But anyway, yeah, the only thing that I really love was just bits and pieces of um, season 12. I loved it when Yovana had said, honey, it's your man. <laughs> That's the snake. <laughs> you need to worry about Miss Portia. Child, I thought I would fall out my seat. And it, that's still a staple. Just like um, these alleged one hit sayings. Like when um, Sheree Whitfield was on the show. And she was telling that guy to try to help her with some type of event or whatnot. She said, who going to check me, boo? Who going to check? You know, y'all find myself be saying that in my real life. So, that was like a one hit wonder. And so, when she said, your snake is your man, <laughs> I was like, priceless. Okay. Priceless, priceless, priceless. And let me see. Uh, what else did I like about the show? Uh, I tell you, really wasn't much. I was really trying to figure out. Do anybody know why Nene hired Lisa Bloom? Because it really never came out. Why did she hire Lisa Bloom? What was the story part of that piece? Because it never really got brought out. It was just a rumor. She had allegedly had hired her. Her team had, you know, she became a part of Nene's team. And I'm like, okay, so what What transpired? You didn't get a spinoff show. Uh, did you get your money back that you probably had to allegedly pay the cameraman? Uh, girl what i mean she's supposed to be like a women's right attorney um she wants to stump out injusticeness that are uh done against women in uh the entertainment world or whatever professional world they may be in i, I mean i don't i don't know did anybody catch it or get it why was she here and then we had that scene where king came in there with that four man peace woman band <laughs> trying to upset my little Hampton's event which she damn did a good job because I, I did laugh I snickered a little bit I said that damn kid you whoo but uh yeah that's all I really enjoyed of that particular scene and let me see back down memory lane yes I can feel, I can feel the happiness. I can feel the pain. Yes, I remember the one with the cookie lady. I just wish Tanya would have stood her ground a little bit more. And if she didn't get her straight at that particular scene, she should have came, you know, at the last uh, couple of uh, scenes of the last two episodes of season 12. She should have found Mark's allegedly woman, can you see he was cheating on her with and, and didn't want to let the relationship go. She should have found that lady. That would have been priceless. That would have been the peace resistance, the showstopper, the stunner, the number one stunner for that season. That would have been straight up hood, but it would have been good. You know what I'm saying? Woo! That would have been good. That would have been a good showstopper, but that didn't happen. Um... Yes, it was just really lackluster. It's like you had to pick your moments, you know. But other than that, y'all get out in them comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought were the best episodes being shown for season 12. Because like I said, it wasn't a minute. It, it wasn't a minute, Lord. It wasn't a minute. But anyway, we're going into this article. It was written up, I'm going to say, uh, by Love B. Scott himself, okay? Um, the title... 
of the article was exclusive. The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12 Virtual Reunion T. Nene Leakes and Yovana lied about Snake Gate. Go figure. Uh, Kenya Moore exposed an alleged affair. And Eva Marcel let Nene have it. Okay, and I'm like, it can't be too much of uh, Eva letting Nene have nothing because when they were actually being filmed uh, during Season 12, Chapley. There was no getting together on anybody's side. Nene didn't really shade uh, Eva, and Eva didn't really shade Nene, but she gonna have all this stuff to say about Nene uh, off where they weren't in the same room with one another. And then when you having a format where you're doing stuff virtually, and you're not like in ear, well, you might be earshot, but you're not in physical space. You know, where you can reach out and touch someone if you just got, you know, froggy like that and you wanted to jump. They weren't in that type of an atmosphere. So, the rumors that I've been hearing out on these social media streets, that Nene left. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> they weren't in your house. They weren't even in your personal space. Why were you muting? Why were you leaving, exiting off of the stream yard platform, virtual platform, Nene? That's why I say... You may have run your time on this show because OGs don't, they go and get them a cocktail if they must. Go use the bathroom if you must, but you come back. You come back. Yeah, you need Phaedra. You need Phaedra, honey. But anyway, going back into the article or starting of the article, it said the ladies of the Real Housewives of Atlanta got together for the virtual season reunion. And as always, lovebscott.com is here to tell you exclusively what went down, why it went down, and how it went down. Not in the article, just my pun. Chuck, is that Mama snoring? Good God. That 81-year-old snoring like she done had a hard day at work. All right, then. He's still trying to say that that's not me. When? Him and I recorded him last night snoring. Oh, that's who? Who is that? Grandmama or Austin? That's Austin. Snoring? Oh, that's what you were playing? I thought that was Grandma down the uh, hall. See, you got me trying to blow on Grandmama. Shame on you. Okay, but anyway, we all snore. Hell. The dog snore. Snore. But anyway, sorry about that. Had to do my sidebar off air, but uh, y'all got it caught up into the mix. Because I don't ever stop. Now, I just let it happen. Just, you know, let it freestyle. But anyway, it says, cutting right to the chase, Nene Leakes has been revealed as the mastermind behind Snake Gate. Well, we knew that. Those who had eyes to see and ears to hear, we knew it wasn't nothing to no Snake Gate. Nene, fictitiously, fake, foolery, fuckery, fraudulent, shitty activity behavior just made the whole scenario up. Okay, because she ain't had nothing else to go. She didn't really have anything else to give us, and it was just lackluster. I mean, we didn't want, want to hear about Greg episode, his bout with cancer. That was just enough that, you know, for season, where it was 11 or 10 we were on. We, we didn't want it no more. We didn't want We couldn't digest it anymore. It was too much. It's about her instead of about Greg. But, you know, we don't really want to hear about, you know, uh, that type of uh, issue. We just want to pray about it. And just let it be, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, moving back to the actual article. It says, if you remember, we told you that friend of the show, Yovana Monoplacer, never actually had or heard the alleged audio of Cynthia Bailey trash talking Nene Leakes. Okay? Yovana appeared during the reunion and re revealed that the Snake Gate audio never actually existed and that it was all a ploy. Nene created to stir up a storyline. See? Ah, now that's just allegedly. I don't know how true this is. I'm just reading the article that Lovey Scott had put out, and we're just dissecting it and ascertaining the truth of what we feel may be the truth, putting our own speculation into it. Okay, but we're going back to it. It says, according to Yovana, she went along with Nene's scheme because it was a way for her to finally become a full time housewife and not just itch. From Clark Atlanta. As we saw all season, Yovana, who Nene introduced to the group last season, got more camera time this season, having one on one chats with Cynthia, Eva, and a few of the other ladies. All of Yovana's conversations revolved around the non existent audio. Now, sidebar, I had to tell you, 
that was some messed up stuff okay that was so fake foolery full of foolery so fuckery fraudulent shitty type of storyline nini could have even brought into fruition and of course Yvonne really didn't play it up or, or, or play it to another whole level to where it could have been peeking out to put Nene in some other type of uh, negative lighting. You see what I'm saying? Because towards the end of Snake Gate, you know, Nene and her was fussing out in the hall like, girl, come and give me something. You know what I'm saying? Can't, you got me looking all this, that, kind of, I mean, it, I, Yvonne could have broke it down out there in that hall and she could have came back and said, you know what, honey, not only is Dennis a snake, honey, Nene is a snake too, honey. She was the mastermind behind all this stuff. And Cynthia, girl, she just wanted to just chew you up because she was upset with you because you didn't tell her about Kenya was coming to your signals thing. And I got to go, boo, and I gave her a kiss to the left, kiss to the right. That's French kissing, you know what I'm saying? And I would have exited my ass on up out of there you know what i'm saying and all of the drama should have and would have folded right there for nini to get her ass out of it but see you Yvonne, you didn't play it like that i would have played that shit if especially if i wasn't having a chance to come back on the show y'all would have remembered me from that scene i can tell you that much but anyway that was just my pun getting back to the article it said um prior to the reunion Nene called when that Yovana was invited to the reunion and sent Yovana a cease and desist letter in an attempt to stop her from speaking on the truth. It wasn't long ago that Nene sent Portia Williams a cease and desist letter after their public Instagram falling out. A few years ago, Nene also sent Kenya Moore a cease and desist letter on her birthday. That seems to be her thing. I'm like, ooh, child, they take Laura Ring to another whole level. I mean, how much did you pay for those cis and deceased letters? How much did you pay, Nene? Because my feelings like this, when you do stuff like that, it must be some truth in it. Because people can talk all day long. Words do not hurt you. It really don't. It wasn't stopping your money flow. It wasn't stopping your popularity. It wasn't uh, stopping any money you were trying to make out there. It wasn't doing nothing on your name but making you more relevant. Okay? Good, bad, it's all press. All right? That was just my pun intended, not in this article. But I'm like, come on, Nene. How you going? You knew it was a plausible, possible idea that Andy was going to bring. Yovana in to get her side on snake gate or just how she felt about getting a little bit more time to express herself and show us a little bit more of her personality on season 12 you had to know that she was going to be given at least 10 minutes you know of fame girl I don't need any, I don't know any, maybe it's your time to not shine anymore, girl. You, maybe you just need to make guest appearances. But I'm like, you need to walk up your money a little stronger, honey. Because I'm, I'm pretty much thinking if you didn't have Real Housewives of Atlanta, girl, I don't know if you would be able to stay in that lap of luxury. Because it does not seem <sighs> that you have everything together. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping you've been, you know, imploring your money to be making money for you in stocks, bonds, or uh, maybe you bought some gold, uh, you know, gold bars, a, a bullion or something, you know? Because, honey, this reality show stuff don't last forever, and things do change. So, I'm just saying, Nene, I'm just saying, girl. But going back to the article, it says, according to our sources, Nene was so upset that Yovana was allowed to appear at the reunion and threaten production. I'm like, Nene, who are you going on and threatening, girl? Whether it's verbal or physical, who are you threatening? Okay. You can make your ways or, 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 or thoughts known without going threatening people, putting your hands on people. Then you tell uh, Portia one time ago during one season that uh you if you angry with somebody you definitely don't show it on camera you don't have no witnesses when you finna put hands on people then you tell your little sister that one time you were smart enough not to put your hands on them like then you put your hands on the camera man girl the hypocrisy but anyway going back to the article 
It said uh, Portia and Nene are back to being big sister, little sister, and came into the reunion very clearly on the same page. Whenever arguments broke out, the dynamic seemed to be very much Nene and Portia versus Kenya, Eva, Marcel, and Candy Burris. My God, no. It was Kenya, Eva, and Candy against Nene and Portia. Well, I'm like, go ahead. Where the hell was Cynthia Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, going back to the article, it said Nene and Candy got into it over a few things, but during their main argument, it was revealed that Nene basically hired Lisa Bloom to put legal pressure on Bravo. That explains why Nene has suddenly taken issue with Candy's spinoffs. Nene told Candy that she would be getting some kind of legal paperwork also. I'm like, girl. What, Nene? What? What are you doing? Are you just spending money on Lisa Bloom and Lisa Bloom just taking your money, girl? Is that what I'm I was trying to figure out? And I guess I answered my own question. Nene hired Lisa Bloom to put pressure on Bravo to give Nene a spinoff since she was giving, they were giving Candy Burst a spinoff. Is that what we do? Girl. And if she getting a spinoff, it's be probably because um, maybe she's thinking about leaving the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she wants a fair playing field where she's given at least three seasons to try to make it work. So she can be like Kim Zosiak over there at Tardy for the Party. Okay, but it seems like Nene, girl, you need to stop with all this, this sis and see shit. Okay, or well, maybe they need to start throwing some cis and deceased letters at you. I, I understand, girl. See, that's what I'm saying. This money that you're spending on these lawyers you have on retainer is ridiculous, and you know, the lawyers probably laughing at you too, but they cash in your checks. Yes, they are. But anyway, going back to the article, it says, of course, Nene and Kenya got into it. Nene went in on Kenya's marriage to Mark Daly, but that was to be expected. Kenya hit back with allegations of Nene Leakes' secret boyfriend, a man named Rodney, who lives in D.C. Sources have all, well, sources have previously told LoveBeScott.com that Nene is, in fact, dating a man named Rodney, who lives in D.C. and works for the USDA. Um... We hear they spend time together whenever Nene's in Maryland checking up on her swag boutique at the MGM National Harbor. But we digress. Even a diva, Eva the diva has finally arrived. According to our sources, the Eva we got glimpses of throughout the season came in guns blazing and ready to secure her peach for next season. Lord, I hope not. Woo, child, because I'm, that's all she do is have these moments at the end of the season to go off on somebody. And, like, what happened during the season? We didn't see any of that. We just saw you eating very well and just laying around everywhere looking pretty. That's pretty much it, you know? So, I'm like, girl, or oh, that little thing she came to Toronto and caught herself making up with Nene, but it, it really was no flare fame and no flashy times there with the verbalness, you know? Girl, only tame mouths were being had at that particular scene they were showing us during season 12. But anyway, that was my sidebar. Going back to the article, it says, Eva read Nene down to the ground and laid everything out with Portia. We're told that off-camera Portia took issue with Eva saying that baby PJ looks like Dennis McKinley and felt she was trying to call baby PJ ugly. Now, my thing is, see, this is a... A thing of word and expression, what people may have thought, just like, uh, you know, what's her name? Eva did say, uh, baby PJ looked like Dennis with a bow, meaning, uh, if PJ didn't have a bow, she looked just like her daddy. Now, I didn't, I still don't think, or uh, ever thought that Dennis was an ugly man. He ain't no, no you know candy you want to look at all the time you know no i candy <laughs> but he ain't no ugly man either you know what i'm saying he got a little swag by himself i can see why portia like him he probably be good in that bed that's why she can't let him go or then again it could be the finance because he got his own bed so it could have been a little bit of both you know what i'm saying but anyway no he wasn't ugly but see that's people's perception of what she thought people were trying to say that her baby was ugly which is quite contrary no the baby's not ugly and dennis is not ugly same as people could have had took that same type of stance when nene had called um 
Kenya Buffalo. And they everybody jumped to the gun with saying, well, Kenya did call her baby a buffalo. Yeah, she did. You know, we're just going to say what actually was brought out of Nene's mouth. But we knew she was not calling, you know, uh, Kenya baby a buffalo for real, real. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a play on words. It's how people wanted to perceive it. And it was just taken out of content to the third degree. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Uh, leaving that and going back to the article, it says since Nene had issues with everyone, she, uh, we're told she left the virtual set several times and eventually just didn't come back. It's unclear if they'll edit her throughout both reunion episodes, but she was not present for the end of the taping. And for Cynthia Bailey, we're told she rode the fence as always. Okay. Tanya Sims appeared and got into a short back and forth with Kenya Moore, but Tanya isn't really one to argue argue so it fizzled i'm like girl you need to take lessons from marlo you need to have some secret uh banter with uh some sharp tongues of the wit of marlo hampton okay even if you had to get a little um tipsy or will you come out to play if she really went hard on your man again paul judge <laughs> But like I said, if you're going to play in the playground, Tanya, you got to come to play to win, baby. You got to come to play to win. All right. Just my sidebar. Moving on. It says Marlo Hampton also made an appearance, but it was difficult to understand her. We're not sure if that's because of her speech or a weak Wi-Fi connection, probably a combination of both. It should also be noted that both Nene and Marlo made a stop through Titty City on the way to the reunion because both ladies had their girls out and almost on full display of the camera. That reminds us of earlier this season when Nene arrived to a scene with her whole breast out. Now I'm like, Nene, I probably wouldn't want to saw them if I was younger in my 20s and 30s. Okay, because titties are just titties. You know, you have to have the long ones that's drawn out, that's flat and just shaking everywhere. It's similar to what mine's looking like right now. <laughs> well, you have the ones that's perking up in attention and, you know, everything got it going on and whatnot. But I just don't understand with older women, seasoned women, wants to show their assets, their titties out. Even in the, um, I mean, lingerie, you don't really have a choice. But when you have on clothing, when you're going outside or when you're going to an event, do we, should we, must we have our breasts out for everybody to partake of? Let's, you know, let's just flaunt your promiscuity or something to that effect. Or that's what... I guess men have showed or told women this is the way for them to get a get noticed and you never know who's out there. That's almost like a casting couch thing going on, but you're promoting it. It's like you're leaving nothing to the imagination and that's just trashy behavior. That's you know, that's how I see it. So this is what it is. But yeah, they had the titties out all the time, all during season uh 12 11 10 9 8 5 4 3 2 1 okay well maybe not the first four seasons but it just started to get very evident as the real housewives franchise kept going on and they're building you know each year it seems like lesser clothing are being shown and most of the women not just on the real housewives of atlanta but platonic beverly hills uh orange county Everything is shown to where they want to see the women's assets. Like, that's what they're there for. They're modeling their bodies, you know, and giving men something to look at. <coughs> I don't know. It's just crazy. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. Moving on and finishing out the commentary. Hush, Elijah. Elijah. Okay, it says, um, we don't know for certain who's returning next season, but from this reunion, it looks like Cynthia may be on her way out and Evil will be sticking around. <coughs> uh, be sure to tune in to the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion airing next Sunday at 8 p.m. on Bravo. So, I guess it will be, what is that? I don't have my calendar. So, who will be ending on the 1st? So I guess it would be May May 5th, y'all. Maybe May 5th or May 12th. They'll show us. I'm thinking May 5th uh, of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Hopefully, it's just one taping. You know what I'm saying? Because if Nene sat there and 
Well, maybe they taped all in one day and they broke it up. That's what I'm thinking. Because they usually don't just show us one taping, even though we're doing it virtually um, this year because of Corona. Uh, <coughs> but I'm just, I'm really shocked. I'm really shocked to read that Nene had to rush her behind out. I mean, come on, Nene. What's up with that? That's just too much drama going on, even for somebody your age, okay? And your status. But that's all I had, guys, about uh, what B. Scott had put out on her platform regarding the reunion taping and the season that will be airing fairly soon to us. And we can just see how these women really got down in their homes. Kind of similar to how they would tape in their confessionals at home. But, uh, ooh, child. A Nene walking out? That's not good. That's not a good look. Not a good look at all. For her to still be reigning. She's the queen. She's the HBIC. Ah, and Cynthia, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Where's your talk show? Your dating show you and Mike Hill supposed to be promoting and, and doing with one another. Hell, we're going into the summer. I'm ready getting ready for the fall. Where's the show at? Where is the show, girl? But anyway, that's all I have for this particular video. Y'all get down in the comments. Tell me what y'all thought about said subject matter and what B. Scott had put together as commentary for us to partake of and enjoy or not enjoy. Okay? It's your world. You get down there and tell me what you thought. Put your speculations, your, your opinions, um, your perspectives of what you wish you would have saw, what you did saw, and it was just effed up, you know, pretty much. The whole season. And who was your favorite for season 12. Okay. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like our videos. And I will see you next video taping. Good night.